Good afternoon, everyone. Hopefully you are all here because you want to learn more about the 2014 National Core Music Standards. If you are, then you're in the right place. Before we get started, I would like you to think about a couple of questions that are philosophical in nature. First of all, why do we have standards for music education? Do they help us design the best education for our students? Or are they more like an obstacle course designed by someone who's sitting behind a desk and has no idea of what actually goes on in the music classroom? In other words, do you think that the standards are good for music education? Or do they weigh down an already overburdened teacher? How much does it really matter if we know and follow the standards? If you have any doubts or questions about the core music standards, this presentation is designed to give you a clear understanding of what the new standards are and how to begin using them in the classroom. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Luke Juris and I currently teach in Dutton, Montana. For the last five years, I've been teaching music in public schools where the class size averages less than 10 students, where an ensemble of more than 20 students is a large ensemble, and where the pep band roster varies drastically depending on whether the boys team or the girls team is playing out on the court. Many of you are probably familiar with these types of situations and could add a few of your own. I affectionately refer to this type of teacher as the one horse pony show. That is, one teacher who wears all of the hats, runs all of the departments, and somehow still finds time to attend presentations like this one in order to be a better teacher for their students. It is my goal that by the end of this presentation, you will all have a better idea about what the core music standards are and how you can begin to include them in your own program. By now, most of you are aware that the Montana Office of Public Instruction has published new state standards for music. The new Montana music standards align directly with the core music standards with some modifications. Therefore, learning about the core music standards has a direct impact on your understanding of the new state standards, which is important because they are somewhat ambiguous. So now, without any further delay, I will begin with a quick overview of the core music standards. According to Scott Schuler's article in the Music Educators Journal, the writers of the core music standards were tasked with reflecting on the authentic discipline of music and creating an educational framework to help music teachers improve the quality of their instructional programs. When the word authentic is used, it is referring to the question of what do musicians need to know and be able to do in real-world situations. In other words, it is focusing on the skills and knowledge required to function in the musical world after graduation. The writing team then took the answers to this question and developed an educational framework for musical instruction. This resulted in four categories which they called artistic processes. Creating, performing, responding, and connecting. The first artistic process, creating, describes how musicians generate, develop, and complete original musical ideas. If you are familiar with the 1994 national standards, this process covers the third and fourth standards, composing and improvising within spe specific guidelines. Research by Cindy Bell showed that of the nine standards, most teachers considered improvisation and composition as their weakness. Teachers also stated that these skills were some of the most important for developing creativity in their students. This problem is not solved by updating the framework of the standards, but the process of creating is more clearly described in the core music standards. Teachers in small rural schools have the advantage of creating the entire K-12 curriculum and monitoring the process of individual students. By the time your students graduate, they could be writing songs for music class as easily as they are writing essays for English class. The second, most often emphasized process is performing. Patrick Freer pointed out the paradox between the performance and educational goals of a music program. Should public performances be the highest priority, or should educational outcomes be the most important? These questions are not a new development in music education. Jacob Evanson, an outstanding choral director in the 1920s, complained of the attention and praise that his choirs received for performances rather than the sound education that his students were receiving in music. Freer suggested that accepting and balancing the priorities of both performance and education will produce the best results for the entire music program. 
The core music standards, likewise, include performance as an important outcome in music education. Moreover, they cover the entire process of performance, from selecting the music, to analyzing and interpreting it, to refining by evaluating and rehearsing, and finally, to presenting it for an audience. The third artistic process in the new standards is called responding. We respond to music when we analyze, interpret, and evaluate what we are actively listening to. Think for a moment about how you respond when listening to music. What is the first thing that you listen for? Do you listen for the technical aspects of a performance? The clarity of rhythms, dynamic contrast, accuracy of notes, tone quality, intonation? Or do you listen for the expressive qualities of music? In other words, does the music bring images into mind, stories, emotions, and the like? I would guess that for most of us, it is a combination of both. The core music standards also focus on both the elements of music and the expressive intent of a performance. The, there are two types of response to music, intellectual and emotional. Intellectual responses are based on what we know about music, the form, meter, tonality, style, dynamics. Emotional responses are based on our interpretation of the message and expressive intent of the music. The core music standards lay out the process of educating students to have informed intellectual and emotional responses to music. The final artistic process is connecting. Think of connecting as a two-way street. Musicians draw upon their own personal knowledge and experience to make better music, and making music provides opportunities to gain knowledge and experience. In their book, Understanding by Design, Grant Wiggins and Jay McTighe explained that students generally do not understand how to transfer information to new situations unless they practice transferring, or connecting, under the guidance of their teachers. The core music standards are designed to incorporate the skill of making connections throughout the other three processes of creating, performing, and responding. Before I go on to the individual standards themselves, let's revisit one of the questions that I posed at the beginning of this presentation. Why should you use the core music standards in your classroom? I believe there are three answers to that question. First, the new standards reflect the authentic discipline of creating and consuming music in the real world. Second, the standards are designed to develop musical independence in your students. In other words, by incorporating the standards, your students will become more capable of making musical decisions on their own. Instead of constantly telling the students how it should go, they will be able to share the responsibility of rehearsing the music. Finally, the standards promote musical literacy and creativity. There is a big difference between a musician who understands what he or she is performing and a musician who simply performs well. Music is a medium through which ideas can be created and shared. And students deserve to understand the beauty of compositions and performance in a way that will last them for a lifetime. Now that I've explained the theoretical framework behind the core music standards, I will begin describing each standard in detail. The core music standards are actually laid out in five separate documents. Each one covers a different strand or course, such as general music, music technology, composition and music theory, harmonizing instruments such as piano and guitar, and ensemble classes. I have studied and analyzed the general music and ensemble strands, which are the most common courses available in small schools and combine them through my own synthesis of the materials. In this presentation, each standard will be explained as it relates to band, choir, and general music, and all of their relevant grade levels. The first four standards, imagine, plan and make, evaluate and refine, and present, lay out the whole process of composing, improvising, and creating original musical ideas. Each standard is listed verbatim in bold and italic print. The first standard is, generate musical ideas for various purposes and contexts. I have translated each standard into the familiar student's will format so that I can clarify some of the broad terms in the core music standards. First, the students will create their own expressive musical ideas. According to the core music standards glossary, an expressive idea is something that communicates thought or emotion. Creating expressive ideas requires more authentic creativity, especially when compared to the old-fashioned method of just putting random notes and rhythms together to write a song. 
This standard begins at the pre-kindergarten level with physical movement. For example, improvising a dance movement or a gesture. And then moves to rhythmic, melodic, and harmonic ideas as the grade levels progress. The duration of musical ideas also increases as grade levels progress from short motifs in the early grades to complete musical works at the most advanced proficiency level. If you are familiar with the 1994 standards, you should recognize the phrase within specified guidelines. In essence, this is where you would provide rules and directions concerning the meter, tonality, form, and style that are appropriate for the knowledge and abilities of your students. For example, if you have been focusing on the pentatonic scale in the classroom, you might ask the students to improvise a musical sentence that is full of energy using only the notes of the pentatonic scale. The standards specifically include meter and tonality as guidelines for younger students and style and form for older students. The ensemble strand also includes guidelines that reflect the characteristics of musics or text being studied in rehearsal. The core music standards place a lot of emphasis on understanding the purpose and context of music. In fact, almost every standard includes a phrase about purpose and context. Think of purpose as the reason for which music is created, ceremonial, recreational, commercial, or general artistic expression. The context is the historical, cultural, personal, or societal environment in which the piece is written or performed. As students learn about different genres, cultures, and historical periods, they can authentically create, experience, and appreciate a wide variety of music. The second standard addresses the next step in the creative process, planning and making. It reads, select and develop musical ideas for defined purposes and contexts. There are two separate performance outcomes included with this standard. The first outcome is that students will select from musical ideas that they have generated and develop their own ideas and musical vocabulary as they continue to gain knowledge and experience. This standard requires students to develop a vocabulary for expressing musical ideas in the same way that a jazz musician uses scales and riffs to improvise over chord changes, or a percussionist uses rudiments to compose a drum cadence. Again, the standards focus on the purpose, context, and expressive intent of musical ideas. As students become more knowledgeable and experienced, they will understand how musical ideas can be shaped by purpose, ceremonial, recreational, commercial, or artistic expression, context, historical, cultural, personal, or societal, and expressive intent, the thoughts or emotions that are being communicated through the music. In the general music stand, pre-kindergarten students begin by exploring preferences for a variety of musical ideas. Lower elementary students begin discussing and explaining expressive intent, and older students integrate purpose and context into their decisions and explanations. The core music standards highlight the importance of understanding compositional techniques through analysis, experience, and evaluation. According to the glossary document, compositional techniques are the ways in which a composer manipulates musical elements to express musical ideas. Some examples of this would include the use of tension and release, sound, and silence, variety and unity, and other compositional devices, which are the basic characteristics of sound meter, tonality, rhythm, pitch, harmony, dynamics, texture, timbre, form, and style. As students experience and understand compositional techniques, they should use them to develop their own original musical ideas. The second performance outcome is that the students will document their original ideas using musical notation. The core music standards delineate two types of notation, standard and iconic. Iconic notation is used primarily with pre-kindergarten through second grade students. Some examples of iconic notation include using long dashes, short dashes, and dots to denote rhythm, drawing lines to show melodic contour, adjusting note sizes to reflect dynamics, and using colors, shapes, and symbols to show form or timbre. The standards also include video and audio recordings as an alternative to standard notation. Standard notation is introduced at the first grade level and takes a prominent position by the third grade. The third standard contains two essential components, 
The first is evaluate and refine selected musical ideas to create musical work that meets appropriate criteria. Although teachers are inherently responsible for evaluating student work in progress, musicians need to be able to evaluate their own creative work to some degree after graduation. Therefore, the core music standards include self-evaluation as an important concept, beginning with substantial guidance at the pre-kindergarten level and moving toward limited guidance by the end of the first grade. Students should use criteria in the form of checklists and rubrics to assess and revise their own work beginning at the third grade level. Prior to that, revisions are based on peer, personal, and teacher feedback. There are two types of criteria that are introduced in the third grade. Teacher provided criteria and collaboratively developed criteria. In other words, students become responsible not only for self-evaluation, but also for designing the evaluation criteria. In ensemble classes, High school students use established criteria for self-evaluation. According to the glossary document, established criteria are designed for a variety of purposes and contexts and have gained general acceptance and application over time. The various criteria for self-evaluation reinforce the concepts of purpose, context, expressive intent, and compositional techniques, which have already been covered and defined. Student revisions should be driven by the results of self-evaluation and teacher feedback. These revisions are evidence of musical growth over time, and therefore the original documents should be preserved as often as possible. While improvised ideas can be uh, evaluated and refined, they may be difficult to document using standard notation. It's easier to document revisions of composed pieces using standard notation. Documenting revisions begins in the third grade. In the fifth and at the novice proficiency level, students should begin to explain the reasons behind their revisions. The rationale for refining artistic work should center on criteria that were used during the evaluation process. The second component of the third standard reads, share creative musical work that conveys intent, demonstrates craftsmanship, and exhibits originality. The culminating event of the creative process is sharing the work with others. Depending on the grade level of the student, purpose, and context, this could be an informal presentation for the rest of the class, or a formal presentation at a concert or a similar venue. Musical works should be performed by an individual or ensemble, but they can also be presented in MIDI files or audio recordings. Between the third and fifth grade level, one performance outcome of this standard is for students to explain the expressive intent of an original work to the audience. In other words, they should describe the emotions, thoughts, or ideas that they are trying to convey through the music. The level of craftsmanship should be appropriate to each student's understanding of context, purpose, and compositional techniques. Originality describes the amount of creativity and critical thought that is poured into a musical work. The core music standards undeniably raise the bar on composition. Teachers and students can no longer settle for combining random notes and rhythms into eight-bar phrases and call it a composition. Although this may be a meaningful step or exercise in learning about compositional technique, it does not meet the standards of craftsmanship and originality as described in the core music standards. Before we go on to the second artistic process, performing, I would like to share some ideas with you about using the core music standards for creating in general music, band, and choir. These activities, lessons, and units, and general concepts that I have created or come across while researching and analyzing the core music standards. Because teaching situations can vary widely from district to district, such as student enrollment, available, availability of time and resources, and levels of student achievement in music, these ideas and activities are not given in explicit detail. They are designed to give you, the music teacher, the beginnings of an idea on how to implement the core music standards in your own classroom. <clears throat> Research has shown that school-aged children experience a creative slump at around the ages of 9 and 10 or during the fourth grade. This loss of creative potential is linked to an increase in social awareness and social acceptance. That is, 
fourth grade students are more likely to check with their peers to validate their thoughts and opinions um, than with a teacher or an adult. Music teachers should utilize a student's uninhibited creativity, especially between pre-kindergarten and third grade, to build the foundation of creative skills and experiences in music. Then, make sure to guide the students through this transitional time in their lives, providing opportunities to develop their creative skill and thought. Students can build their musical vocabulary through improvisational activities at every grade level on a near daily basis. John Fireabend is a music educator and educational psychologist who uses a simple but effective process for teaching musical vocabulary. He suggests the following sequence. First, echo rhythms or tonal patterns to teach musical ideas. Then, have the students improvise musical ideas within those guidelines. Next, the no teach the notation for those rhythms or tonal patterns. And finally, have the students compose within those guidelines. You don't need to complete the entire sequence during every lesson. For example, you might include two to three minutes of echoing patterns one day, followed by five or so minutes of question and answer the following day, and save the notation and composition for the end of the entire unit. For younger students, consider using Fire Admin's Arioso Land activity, where students have conversations in sung speech, while the teacher softly provides harmonic accompaniment in the background. I will be the first to admit that I have treated composition as a check-in-the-box activity where the educational op objective is for students to produce a song. Assessment was based on whether or not the students had the right number of beats in each measure, started and ended on specific pitches, and used the correct number of measures. I even had my students perform their compositions for the class. It's no wonder that most of these compositions were devoid of any musical expression. While analyzing the core music standards, I realized that I had been using the wrong approach for teaching composition. It is my suggestion to you that you also reflect on how you teach composition. Ask yourself, am I focusing on notes and rhythms, or am I focusing on expressing musical ideas? How do you do that, we might ask. One, day is, one way is to take the focus off of using the right notes and rhythms by asking the students to improvise or compose something for a specific purpose or context. For example, you might set up a scenario for your younger students. Imagine that you're on a wild island and everybody wants to dance around the campfire. Or write a theme song for one of your friends, something to get everyone's attention whenever they enter the room. The scenarios are endless and the students will be writing with a purpose rather than just trying to fill up the right number of measures. This is how we should de develop creativity in the general music classroom. The first idea for creating in band is to incorporate improvisation and composition into the warm-up exercises. This can be a brief 30-second period of chaos while everyone improvises at the same time, or it can be combined with ear training by having a volunteer improvise a short phrase followed by a unison attempt at echoing that phrase. Using meter or tonality as a focus, band students can use simplified scales to improvise rhythmic or tonal patterns. And with careful instruction, you could challenge advanced students to create aria-like songs in multiple tonalities and meters as part of the warming up process. Small school music teachers know that there is often a wide variety of ability levels in a single ensemble. Some students need a challenge, while others need an easier part. Teachers should look for these opportunities where students can arrange or compose their own parts to meet their needs. Identify the challenges inherent in the music and the po possible solutions with the students, not for the students. For example, if a note is too high for one of the trumpet players, work with them to find an alternative note that would fit in the harmony. Or, if a phrase is too difficult because the notes are too fast, what else can the student play in that section? Conversely, if a song is too easy for a student, how can they make it more challenging? Please note that I would not suggest altering a well-known composition that may be regarded as a masterpiece or a classic. However, most contemporary grade 1 and grade 2 band pieces are somewhat generic and are usually written for an educational purpose. And I do believe that modifying them to suit educational needs is an acceptable practice, as long as the composer's intent is considered when making changes to parts. 
This practice falls underneath the fair use section of copyright law. According to the U.S. Copyright Office, printed copies which have been purchased may be edited or simplified, providing that the fundamental character of the work is not distort, distorted or the lyrics altered. Instrumental improvisation is used in all types of popular music, including jazz, rock and roll, and country music. Teachers should demonstrate and explain the basics of improvisation at the beginning of the school year, finding the key and using a scale to create a melody. You could try to stir up the student's interest by improvising to different recordings and then asking a student to suggest a song for you to improvise along with. While improvisation should be included throughout the year, a unit on jazz improvisation is particularly appropriate during April, the Jazz Appreciation Month. Also, you could try to choose repertoire that includes improvisation or even arrange an existing piece by adding a section for improvisation. These are just a few ideas for creating in band. In choir, one way that we can teach creating is through harmonization. Harmonizing requires students to modify pitches but leave rhythms and text the same. While this may come as a natural skill for some students, it is also a teachable skill. You could use a simple folk song like Amazing Grace or songs with simple harmonic progressions and ask a group of students to sing but avoid singing the melody while you provide a harmonic accompaniment. This activity develops the ear and improvisational skills and it can be used throughout the year with a variety of songs. In choir, uh, sight singing is an important part of the choral curriculum. Not only is it an important lifelong skill, but it is also a required part of district music festivals across the state. Learning to sight sing can be combined with improvisation and composition by having your students create melodies using the solfege or number system. Then write the melodies in standard notation and finally present them to the class as a sight singing exercise. One of the major differences between band and choir is the text that accompanies choral music. Using words in combination with music is perhaps the best way to make expressive intent evident in a composition. In other words, Using purpose and context as guidelines, students should experience writing songs of their own. For example, you could ask high school students to write a song about some current event. As they develop skills in improvisation and composition, this type of assignment will become easier for students to complete. Now, I will continue to explain the core music standards for the next artistic process, performing. Performing includes selecting, analyzing, and interpreting music, evaluating and refining performance, and presenting an, a prepared musical work. The fourth standard, Selecting, Analyzing, and Interpreting, contains three core components and will be presented over the next three slides. The first component reads, Select varied musical works to present based on interest, knowledge, technical skill, and context. Students should experience selecting music throughout their education so that when they graduate, they will be able to continue choosing music for performance on their own. There are several different criteria that affect which music we choose for performance. We consider personal preferences and expressive intent, as well as other musical elements, but we also have to be aware of the difficulty of each piece, or how much technical skill it takes to perform. This is most apparent to me when I have beginning guitar students who want to learn a difficult song that they've heard on the radio but it applies to singers and instrumentalists as well. Musicians who try to learn pieces that are out of their ability level are likely to become frustrated and give up. Also, our students should learn that certain songs, even though they are good, are inappropriate for certain contexts. For example, students should understand that pep band music and popular songs are not appropriate for the district music festival. The next component reads, Analyze the structure and context of varied musical works and their implications for performance. This part of the standard has two performance outcomes. First, students need to understand the context and elements of music and how they affect the performance of a piece of music. Learning to perform musical repertoire is an opportunity for students to understand the musical elements inherent in each piece. The goal is to teach students to recognize, for example, when they have the melody, or which key they are in. 
or how their rhythm fits with the rest of the ensemble, and how that information affects the way that they will perform that section. Elementary students learn about the structure and elements of music, as well as a historical and cultural context of the music. And ensemble students also learn about the use uh, compositional techniques, such as idiomatic use of an instrument or text painting. The second outcome of this component is for students to be fluent in reading musical notation. The standards include reading pitches and rhythms, but they also explicitly include symbols for articulations, dynamics, and tempo beginning in the sixth grade. By the eighth grade, students should be able to sight read rhythms and melodies. The final component of the fourth standard reads, develop personal interpretations that consider the creator's intent. Students are expected to identify the expressive qualities of music and make performance decisions based on their interpretation of the composer's intent. Beginning in pre-kindergarten, students explore and become aware of the various expressive qualities of music, such as tone quality of the voice, dynamics, and tempo. In fourth through sixth grade, they demonstrate and discuss how timbre, articulation, style, and phrasing affects the composer's intent. Our goal is to teach students how to bring out the expressive qualities of music in order to communicate the composer's intent. For example, if a piece is exciting and full of energy and suspense, how do singers and instrumentalists communicate that emotion? We teach these concepts by providing musical experiences to our students and then designing educational opportunities for them to make connections and decisions without giving away the answers. After all, when they graduate, who will be there to make interpretive and analytical decisions for them? The fifth standard is rehearsing, evaluating, and refining. It reads, evaluate and refine personal and ensemble performances, individually or in collaboration with others. This standard contains three performance outcomes. The first outcome is for students to develop and use criteria to evaluate their own performance. In other words, students should learn to identify their own mistakes and other areas that need improvement. Beginning in the third grade, Students use teacher-provided and collaboratively developed criteria to evaluate the accuracy and expressiveness of their own personal or ensemble performances. Evaluation rubrics for Montana's district and state festivals focus mainly on the accuracy of a performance, 25 points total awarded for tone, intonation, rhythm, technique, and balance, while the expressiveness of a performance, interpretation, is only awarded 5 points. However, the core music standards suggest that more value should be given to the expressiveness of a performance. Traditionally, teachers have assumed the responsibility of leading rehearsals, constantly evaluating the ensemble's progress and applying rehearsal strategies for improvement. The core music standards list the educational objective of teaching students to develop their own methods and rehearsal techniques for refining performance. This outcome reflects the new focus on student independence that will serve them in their long-term musical pursuits. Students should begin sharing this responsibility as early as the second grade and continue to develop, apply, and refine rehearsal strategies when they pursue band and choir. The third performance outcome is only listed in the sixth through eighth grade general music strand. It addresses the skill of knowing when music is ready to present based on an evaluation of the accuracy and expressiveness of a performance. Consider the difference between formative and summative assessment. The first outcome is formative assessment. That is, making evaluative decisions throughout the entire process of learning a piece of music. This outcome is summative assessment, or making evaluations regarding the final product as it will be presented to an audience. The sixth standard is the final standard for the artistic process of performing. It reads, perform expressively with appropriate interpretation and technical accuracy and in a manner appropriate to the audience and context. The sixth standard has two performance outcomes. Beginning at the pre-kindergarten level, students should learn to be expressive when performing music. At the second grade level, students begin to focus on technical accuracy in their performances. Throughout the rest of the grade levels and the ensemble strand, 
there is a balanced focus between the expressive qualities and the technical accuracy of a performance. According to the glossary, technical accuracy includes attention to tone quality, intonation, diction, rhythms, pitches, and tempo. The expressive qualities are those elements which make each performance unique, including use of dynamics, tempo, and articulation in combination with the other elements of music. Furthermore, the standards require students to perform a variety of music representing diverse cultures, styles, genres, and historical periods. The second performance outcome addresses the additional skills, knowledge, and dispositions for performing in a variety of circumstances. These include an understanding of the purpose and context of a concert program, practicing good and professional behavior and dress, and making connections with the audience. The core music standards suggest performing in a variety of formats, both formal and informal, prepared and improvised. To summarize the performing artistic process, students select, analyze, and interpret music to gain an understanding that informs performance, rehearse, evaluate, and refine their performance while learning and preparing the music, and perform the music with accuracy and expression for an audience. Here are some ideas for including the artistic process of performing in your general music classes. The first idea is to consider including a musical show and tell day one or more times during the year. Let your students know well ahead of time and provide guidelines for selecting songs to perform for the class. This would be an informal type of performance, so you might consider making it optional or allowing partners based on what you know about the confidence of your students. For example, you might ask your students to sing one of their favorite songs from a movie, besides Frozen, or sing a song that their parents and grandparents know. My second idea comes from an article by Aaron Zaffini in General Music Today. Informances are informal performances that inform the audience of the learning process that occurs in the general music program. These could be scheduled during the day, such as inviting parents and community members to visit the classroom to watch the students perform or taking the class to visit the administrator's office or other classrooms. Or they could be scheduled in the evening so that parents, administrators, board members, and community members can see what the students are learning in music class. During informances, the students should be given the opportunity to talk about the ex and explain the pieces that they are performing rather than trying to explain them to the audience yourself. Informances can include music that is well prepared, but it can also be a demonstration of learning and process. Either way, the result is the same. The students will gain more performance experiences in front of an audience. With the core music standards focus on developing musical independence, it is never too early to begin asking the students to give feedback during the learning process. Ask a student to listen to and evaluate as the rest of the class is learning. Ask them, how are we doing? And see if they can identify a problem and offer a way to fix it. You can continue to develop this skill throughout the elementary years so that self-evaluation and rehearsal strategies are already familiar concepts when the students begin to sing in choir or play in band. This last idea is hopefully something that you are already doing in your classroom. When we select music to teach to our students, we should not only consider the artistic, cultural, and historical value of each song or activity, but we should also analyze each song for its potential to teach theoretical concepts and reading skills. This is easier said than done, because you will need to consider the progression of skills and knowledge that you want your students to learn over the course of their entire elementary music education. Also, each song can be used to teach many different concepts. Don't try to teach everything that one song has to offer, but keep things fresh by using new songs to teach old concepts and old songs to teach new concepts each year. Here are some ideas that can be used in band and choir. This first idea addresses part of the sixth standard, choosing music to perform. Students should share in the responsibility of choosing music by selecting pieces to study and perform. In beginning band, this could mean that a student would choose exercises from their method books to present informally to the rest of the class. Choir students could be given the same type of assignment, using either popular music or songbooks as a resource. 
more experienced students would benefit by having access to the solo ensemble library where they could choose a piece to study or perform with guidance if necessary. The main benefit of making individual studies a part of the band and choir curriculum is that it allows students to pursue music that challenges them and it is inherently suitable for classes with a variety of ability levels. Building from the idea on the previous slide, teachers should share the responsibility of identifying problems and applying rehearsal strategies. I wouldn't use this technique for every occurrence, otherwise the rehearsal would become too slow and frustrating for the students, but it should be used at least once during each rehearsal. For example, you might inform the students that you heard a mistake during a certain passage and ask the students to identify the error. Then ask them for ideas to resolve the problem. Alternatively, you could let the students know ahead of time to listen for any mistakes and ask for their feedback at the end of the phrase or section. This requires you to teach rehearsal strategies and when to use them so that the students can make these decisions independently. It may also require the students to keep performance evaluation rubrics in their folders to help identify areas for improvement. The third idea for ensemble classes focuses on teaching music theory and vocabulary. Before you begin teaching a new song, analyze it for educational opportunities, focusing on theoretical concepts like meter and tonality, cadences, elongated forms, dis dissonance, and musical symbols and vocabulary. Next, design written tests to administer the day after a concert. The reason for creating tests ahead of time is so that you will know what to focus on when you incorporate vocabulary and analysis into the rehearsals. Finally, make sure to address at least one of these concepts in each rehearsal so that the students are consistently learning and reviewing musical theory. Say to them, this will be on the test. Again, similar to an idea on the previous slide, you should increase the number of performance opportunities for the students by adding a variety of performances. For example, you can invite younger students to come in for a side-by-side -side performance, or perform at retirement homes, other schools, or other areas in the community. In order to meet the standards, be sure to include a variety of contexts and purposes, like patriotic concerts, pop concerts, formal concerts, school dances, or folk music festivals. Rather than adding multiple concerts during the first year, increase, increase the concert load gradually by only adding one or two extra performances each year until you have found a good balance for your particular situation. To continue with the core music standards, the third artistic process is responding to music. This process includes the next three standards, selecting and analyzing, interpreting, and evaluating music and performances. The seventh standard contains two essential components, which will be addressed over the next two slides. The first part reads, choose music appropriate for a specific purpose or context. First, notice the similarity between this standard and the fourth standard, choosing music to perform. In this case, students will need to learn how to make educated decisions about choosing music for listening and study. To understand this, consider how and why you choose music that you listen to. You might take into account the mood that you're in compared to the mood of the music, or choose music based on what you're doing at the moment, dancing music versus studying music, for example. You also have to decide whether you want to listen to familiar music or look for new songs. Likewise, our students should learn to make musically informed decisions about what they are choosing to listen to. Beginning at the pre-kindergarten level, this standard requires students to identify personal preferences when selecting music. For example, deciding between two versions of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, one sung by a soprano and the other performed on an instrument. In the first grade, the concept of purpose is introduced. That is, understanding why a piece was written or performed and how that affects the selection process. Context is introduced at the fourth grade level and other musical characteristics are included in the ensemble strand. At the most advanced proficiency level, students go as far as using research and personally developed criteria for selecting music. The second component of the seventh standard reads, analyze how the structure and context of varied musical works inform the response. 
Again, notice the similarity between this standard and the fourth standard. Analyze the structure and context of varied musical works and their implications for performance. According to the glossary, responding is how we understand and evaluate the expressive intent of music. Students are expected to uh, be able to identify and explain their emotional and intellectual responses to music. For example, why does the William Tell Overture cause a class full of kindergartners to start galloping around the room? Why does the Moonlight Sonata provoke introspective thought? How does Tekeli's Simple Gifts compare to the same tune in Copland's Appalachian Spring? These are the types of questions that this standard addresses. At the third grade level, students should begin identifying how the elements of music and the context affect their understanding and evaluation of the expressive intent of a composition or performance. Earlier grades focus on comparing and contrasting simple musical elements, such as rhythm and melody, and later grades compare the expressive qualities and musical elements in a variety of genres and historical cultural contexts. The eighth standard reads, support interpretations of musical works that reflect the creator's or performer's expressive intent. This standard is also similar to the fourth standard, which reads, develop personal interpretations that consider the creator's intent. Music is an artistic medium for conveying ideas, thoughts, and emotions. According to the glossary, an interpretation is what the musician communicates, the ideas, thoughts, and emotions, which are also called the expressive intent of a musical work. In comparison, analyzing is what we do when we study the structural aspects of a musical work, and responding is how we understand and evaluate a musical interpretation. The eighth standard states that the students should be able to identify and discuss a performer's interpretation and acknowledge the differences between individual interpretations. In other words, two performers can interpret the same song in different ways, and two listeners can interpret the same performance in different ways. Beginning in pre-kindergarten, students should begin learning about music's expressive qualities, namely dynamics and tempo. Between the second and fifth grades, other expressive qualities are included, such as timbre and articulation. In the ensemble strand, students identify and explain the role that text setting and context play in making interpretations. The ninth standard is the final standard in the artistic process of responding. It reads, support evaluations of musical works and performances based on analysis, interpretation, and established criteria. This standard is somewhat similar to the second standard, evaluate and refine selected musical ideas to create musical work, and the fifth standard, evaluate and refine personal and ensemble performances. Students will need to be able to describe the musical elements and expressive qualities of musical works and performances and form an educated, evaluative opinion about what they have heard. The lower elementary grades focus mainly on personal preference of music in a variety of purposes and contexts, and the upper elementary, beginning in third grade, begin to use established criteria for evaluating musical works and performances. Ensemble students should take into account an analysis of the musical elements in a work. Younger students are provided with criteria and rubrics for evaluation, but older students, in order to gain musical independence, should begin to develop their own criteria for evaluating musical works and performances within specific purposes and contexts. Here are some ideas for responding in the general music classroom. The first idea is to incorporate free listening days where students can request specific songs and then have short discussions about each piece. In a 30 to 45 minute period, this might mean using five or six different pieces. If you have access to YouTube or another music listening program, such as Spotify, then you would be able to find just about any song that the students might request. Otherwise, the students would need to choose from the songs that you have available, or they could bring in their own CDs or MP3 players to share their own music. The goals of free listening days are to provide opportunities for students to be in charge of selecting music and to promote discussions of interpretation and analysis for a variety of music. 
Another activity that would meet these same goals is to have the students create their own playlist of music. Creating a playlist would help students learn about purpose and context. For example, think about how we would choose music to listen to while studying compared to music for exercising. Older elementary students could be assigned to write a paragraph for each song, evaluating each one and explaining why they included it in their playlist. Active listening is a great opportunity for teaching students to analyze the elements of music, interpret the expressive qualities of music, and evaluate musical works and performances. Listening activities should be included in lessons on a regular basis, and the song selection should be based partly on the educational opportunities provided by each piece. Teachers should do their own research and analysis of songs for each grade level and carefully sequence their repertoire to cover multiple purposes and contexts and the appropriate musical elements and expressive qualities for each grade level. During active listening, active listening, students should be given plenty of opportunities to evaluate the music they are listening to, beginning with personal preferences and eventually including purpose, context, analysis, and interpretations. Here are some ideas for meeting the standards for responding in band and choir. First, most musicians know that one of the best ways to develop tone and style is to listen to the professionals. Instead of just suggesting that our students should listen to so-and-so, we should develop some kind of underlying unit that requires students to seek out professional recordings and analyze, interpret, and evaluate them. To help your students, you could create lists of famous musicians by voice type or instrument, and then the students can use YouTube or other online services to find recordings that interest them which they can then study and evaluate. You could formally evaluate this assignment by requiring students to write a paragraph or paper, or you could offer extra credit as incentive for each evaluated paragraph that is completed and turned in. Expanding on this idea, music teachers should select professional recordings of famous band and choir performances to share with their ensembles on a regular basis. Besides inspiring the students, you can use these recordings to teach analysis and interpretation and then transfer those concepts to the repertoire that is being studied during rehearsal. In band, this could mean highlighting the idiomatic use of an instrument, and in choir, you could explain the significance behind word painting. The last idea for responding in the classroom is to ask students for their ideas on what makes a good musical work and what makes a good performance. At the beginning of the year, have the students develop criteria in groups for evaluating musical work and performance, and then have them keep their personally developed rubrics in their folders and use them throughout the year while they are listening to music or rehearsing and learning new songs. Getting back to the core music standards, the final two standards explain the artistic process of connecting. The tenth standard reads, Synthesize and relate knowledge and personal experience to make music. This standard describes the holistic process of making and responding to music as it relates to the sum of personal experiences in each of our students. The artistic process of connecting is inherent in the previous nine standards. For example, in the second standard, students make personal connections when they demonstrate and discuss selecting and organizing ideas in the process of creating original work. From the third standard, explaining their expressive intent while presenting an original work connects to their personal knowledge of the expressive qualities of music. In the fourth standard, students make connections to personal preferences and understandings when they select and interpret music to perform, and also when they present music to an audience, which is addressed by the sixth standard. Finally, a student's knowledge and personal interests influence the music that they select for responding in the seventh standard. The eleventh standard reads, relate musical ideas and works to varied contexts and, and daily life to deepen understanding. Students should be able to make connections between music and other subjects, including math, art, 
science, English, history, and social studies. Understanding the context surrounding a musical work or performance deepens the appreciation for both music and the other subjects, whether it be a historical perspective, a cultural perspective, or even a scientific perspective. Again, this standard is inherent in the previous nine standards. In the first and third standards, students consider and explain the context when generating and presenting original musical ideas. In the fourth and sixth standards, students analyze the context of a musical work and demonstrate their understanding through an expressive performance. In the seventh and ninth standards, students make connections to contexts and personal experiences when they analyze and evaluate music through the process of responding. In all of your classes, you should get to know the individual personalities of your students. Small school music teachers have a distinct advantage in having smaller class sizes and being able to know each student personally. Make it a goal to learn about each individual student and modify your lessons to personalize instruction for your students. Highlight the connections between music and other subjects when it is appropriate. Remember, you may be the only music teacher that your students will ever have. Make sure to introduce them to a wide spectrum of musical contexts and purposes so that they can develop eclectic tastes in music. Making historical and cultural connections to music requires a purposeful and thoughtful selection of repertoire in band and choir. You may want to highlight historic events for which a piece is composed, or even make connections to the history and culture of important composers. Also, you could collaborate with other teachers to make a memorable experience for your students across multiple subjects. Finally, students can demonstrate their understanding of musical connections by writing reflective paragraphs or essays. This assignment might be appropriate for upper elementary general music classes or ensemble classes after a concert or a unit of study. Alternatively, instead of writing, the students could explain and discuss personal connections to musical experiences, or the relationship between music, the other arts, other disciplines, varied context, and daily life. As we come to the conclusion of this presentation, I would like you to reflect on two things. First, Think about which of these standards are already present in your curriculum and teaching style. Do you already address creating, performing, responding, and connecting in your classroom? Second, I would like you to think about which of these standards differ from your current practices. Ask yourself how you would have to change your curriculum to implement the new standards. Now, when making changes to the curriculum, don't expect your students to show grade level mastery in the first year use the lower grade bands for each standard to get started. For example, you might teach composition in fourth grade at the first grade level, or include analysis in the high school band at the novice proficiency level. As you and your students gain experience with the new standards and begin to show improvement, then you can continue to adjust the curriculum in order to align with the new standards. Furthermore, do remember that the core music standards are voluntary. The Montana Music Standards, which will become effective in 2017-2018 school year, are not as explicit in describing performance outcomes. Understanding the core music standards will help you interpret the Montana Music Standards. It will be necessary to take a fresh look at your classroom structure and the school year and identify areas for modification. It is probably not a good idea to start a unit on composition and active listening right before the holiday concert, when it might fit better in January or at the beginning or end of the year. Also, you may need to include improvisation, theory, and evaluating music as a warm-up or other procedural part of your daily lessons. The curriculum is bound to change from year to year as everyone becomes more familiar with the core music standards and Montana music standards. In this presentation, we have covered the general music and ensemble strands. You should now have a better understanding of what the new standards are and how to begin using them in your classroom. At this point, I would encourage you to visit the NAFME website 
and read or reread the actual standards document on your own, as well as the Opportunity to Learn standards, which describe the resources that are necessary for music instruction, and the Knowledge, Skills, and Dispositions document, which describes the positive outcomes of providing a good music education to the students. Thank you all very much for your time and attention throughout this presentation, and I hope that you have learned something new uh, that will have a positive effect on your career and the quality of music education that you provide as a service to your students. Have a great evening and enjoy the rest of the conference.